Hello viewer, I'm back after a nice rest. I'm going to try and make a little um, box out of some birch. I've got a couple of pieces of this birch and um, a bit of spalting on it. This I'm going to use as a lid. I've got a slightly deeper piece already chucked up which I'll show you in a minute. In fact I'll show you right now. Right, so I've just started work on this. What I've done is drilled the hole in this end to take my little jaws, my in expansion mode. Got it all chucked up. I want to put a little mortise in this end, the base. And I've just started skimming it. It's quite rough, little holes and what have you in it, but uh, we'll see what we can do with it. But I want to try and leave this edge natural and sort of fit the lid inside it might look rubbish it might end up just being a little dish without a lid but I'm going to give it a go I'm just going to carry on rounding this off now using my spindle gouge with the Ellsworth grind on it so here we go Oh, that's quite smooth now in places. Still a bit more to take off, still a bit of wax there. So I'll just give it another skim. I'm not bothered about that hole as long as it doesn't get any bigger. There you go. Right now I've got it rounded up, I can remove the tail stock, put a mortise in this end. So I'll just square it off first with the uh, parting tool, which is what I usually do, just go like that, very fine skims off it. I'll move the camera slightly so you can see a bit better. Yeah, you can see that. Now we've got a nice flat base on it. There's still a few marks there where it went through on the saw, so I'll just take another skim off it till I've got a nice smooth finish. That's a lot better. Right, I get a little mortise in here now, so I'll, and then I can turn it round and put it in the jaws. Now that's a fairly deep hole in there, I didn't realise it was that deep, but I don't want that hole there, obviously. So uh, I've got to carry on until I've got rid of it. And it's nearly gone, I think by the time I've gone through this with the uh, skew chisel, which gives me the angle for my shoulders, Take a little bit deeper, I should have got rid of it. <laughs> well, it's still there. <laughs> I can't remember what I did with it now, why I went that deep. But I can't go any deeper really, because I'm going to lose, start losing a lot of depth from the, from the 
box itself. So I'll just uh, fill that in with a little bit of shavings and CA glue and then smooth it off that way. Now when you mount something like this shape in the jaws of your chuck, chances are if you take it out, you might not get it back in exactly the same place. Um, it'd be alright if it was a nice flat edge like that side, but this is uh, fairly uneven. So I've just undone the whole chuck, right, leave it mounted in the chuck as it is, you can still work on it no problem. So a few drops of the old CA in that hole and fill it with the same wood that's come out of it in the first place. Just pat that down a bit very quickly. It won't take long to dry, just a few seconds really. I'll just leave it a couple of minutes, go and have a sip of my coffee and then just skim that off and that'll be a nice smooth finish then. There you go, that's it, jobs are good. Right, I'm just going to sand in there now and on the base and I can get it turned round. Get the old abronet, I do like this stuff. Must remember to put the dust extractor on. I've only got up to 240 and now I'm going to put a bit of sand in sealant on and then I'm going to use Yorkshire grit which I'm really chuffed with, it's great stuff. Right, so I've got the sand in sealant on and that's gone nice and dry now. I'm not going to rub it down because that's not what you're supposed to do. This sand, this sand in sealant opens the grain up which enables the Yorkshire grit to get in there and do its job. I'm sure a lot of you know this by now, it's um, a really popular thing to take off a treat. Uh, I think Glyn Senior has done a great job with this stuff. So apply it by hand, give it a good rub in, apply it with the lathe still and work it in for a minute or two. I don't use too much of the stuff, it lasts for ages. It's a really good work in. And when you're happy that it's in there, you can actually feel it smoothing the wood off already. And then you can start your lathe up about 500. I'm sure everybody knows this by now since I did the little promo video for this stuff. Um, but I'm saying it again. Start your layer off at 500 and work your way up as fast as you want to go really. There you go, that's it. Put my little pot away so it doesn't get any muck in it. and then start just using a paper towel, a bit of cloth, anything. If you're going to use cloth, uh, it's best to use some what they call the lathe safe cloths that, that rip if it gets caught and uh, it's a lot safer. But I'm just using a paper towel. Turn the speed up now. See now I'm removing the Yorkshire grit off, it's done its job and I'm just getting as much off as I can with the paper towel. When your paper towel is clean it won't take any more off and that is a beautifully smooth finish and I don't think the camera will pick up, there's actually a bit of a shine on it already. But uh, it's now ready to accept whatever polish you choose to use. I won't get into that. 
I'll just carry on there. Uh, I'll probably use some uh, Sheila Shropshire Shine, I think. Or oh, Woodwax 22, whatever, I'm not bothered. Okay, I'm going to get a coat of polish on that now. Then I can turn it round. Ooh, just apply a quick coat of wax on here. Just putting it on with the lathe still. Use whatever polish you want. I like a, a shiny finish, a lot of people don't. It's entirely up to you what you use for whatever finish you want. But as I've always said, it's just as important to make the base a good finish as it is the rest of the bowl or, or whatever object you're making. Because the first thing people do, they'll pick something up and they'll turn it over. It's just, it's human nature. And uh, so it's nice to have a good finish underneath. I'm getting a nice fresh piece of paper towel now and uh, just buff that up. See it coming off there. Keep turning your paper towel, use a fresh piece. That's lovely and I should repeat that process so it's got two good coats on it and then I'll turn it around so I'll see you in a bit. Right, before I turn it around I'll just show you the jaws that I used which were those which went into this hole okay in expansion mode but now I've got a mortise those are too small now so I'm going to put these jaws on which will fit nicely I hope into that mortise in the base of the uh, whatever it is it's going to be. It only takes a couple of minutes to change your jaws over. It's not worth the risk in saying, oh, I'll try and use those, and then the piece fall, falls out, flies out. It's quite dangerous, so please try and make sure you use the correct jaws for, the, for whatever job. Right, it's nicely secured in the jaws. Let's get this camera tweaked a bit, that's better. Uh, and now I'm going to hollow it out. Um, I could use force and the bits and take a two inches out, but I'm just going to. I need the practice, so I'm going to um, hollow it out with some standard tools. It's a really nice wood to turn. I don't know if I'm going to end up with any bark on the edge because I'm going to take it quite thin. But as long as the shape's there, that's the main thing. Now, to take your time, don't try and force the tool in. Just make sure you run it on the bevel and just take a tiny bit off at a time. You try and force it in, you're going to end up, it'll start vibrating, it'll catch, you know, anything could happen. So just nice and gentle, rub the bevel, or do it that way as I've been doing, just with the actual shoulder, just gentle strokes and uh, you'll be surprised how fast it comes out. carry on doing that until you've got what you want. The smoother you go, the smoother you'll get the cut. Which, and the smoother you get the cut, the less sanding you have to do. Which can't be a bad thing. Well, I'm going to carry on with this, you've seen it before. And so I'll uh, dig quite a bit more of that out. Right, the hollowing's coming on nicely. Um, but then I thought, I just want to put a little bit of a a shape here so before I take it too thin I'm gonna just get my um, 
round carbide cutter and just take it in slightly here so it's got a slightly flared edge it might work it might not we'll soon find out took much off there at all yet. Mind you this uh, could do with turning around a bit. But I have another one. Now I can see it, that's better, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for, just that little flare, that'll do nicely, I just uh, might just round this off a little bit as well. Now it's starting to take shape. Um, it's funny, I, I suppose a lot of us, this bark's coming off, so I'm not bothered about that. Um, a lot of us will sketch things out, a lot of us will just, it's what comes into your head. Um, I never had that shape in mind when I started. Uh, it just, as you're doing it, the wood sort of speaks to you. So, yes, I'd look good with a bit of a curve, you know. I'd look good if you fanned that out slightly. Um, the, mainly the only time I sort of sketch things out is if I'm doing segmented work because um, you've got to have a good idea of the shape so you can cut your segments in different layers so uh, yeah I'm quite happy with that shape now a little pot belly on it a bit like me and um, I'm going to carry on with the inside now Right, I haven't been able to save the, the, the bark, I mean on the birch it's so thin anyway, it's like paper. But um, I'm just hand sanding it round here now. Now there are little bits of the brown, the dark brown that are coming off where it's very, very thin. And I'm not too bothered, it's the shape that I want. Uh, yeah, just hand sanding round the edge. I've lost the bark, not bothered. I like the shape but I'm just hand sanding it just to blend it in a little bit so there's no little steps there get it as smooth as I can anyway and it doesn't take long it's quite soft this is that bit might come off yep get rid of that Yep, that'll do nicely. Excellent. I can sell the rest of it down. This might sound a bit daft, but always keep your sandpaper, whatever you use, an Abronet sandpaper, always keep it moving. If you keep it, leave it in one place, all you're going to do is put a lot of grooves in the wood when you're trying to take it out of the wood. If you're moving it across all the time, you can't put those grooves in. Right, that's the little pot basically done. Nice finish on it there. Not bad at all. Um, now the inside, I'm going to have to do quite a bit of hand sanding on that because I don't want to get my hands in with this uh, nasty edge grabbing my knuckles. I've left a little rim down there because that's where the lid is hopefully going to sit when I make the lid. So that's the next little job. Right, I've just started turning the lid down now. This is um, a worse piece of wood actually. But I'm going to try using it. Now I only want the lid to come to about there 
I'm going to try and keep this. I'm not bothered about the bark again. I'll probably have to sand that off. I don't think it will finish up very nice, that. But um, that's the width I want. As you see, I've started turning it. So if we can get that down to there, and that should sit nicely inside the pot. There. So I'm leaving this end very slightly wider. Yeah, that seems to be coming on alright anyway. Oh well, I shall carry on working on it and see what happens. Right, I'm just finishing the sanding process on this little lid now. And uh, I've sort of put half a handle on it half. <laughs> I wanted to keep it natural, I didn't want to put anything um, too symmetrical on the top. There's just enough there to grab onto. See? Okie dokie. Right, I've just parted the lid off. And um, there it is. Got to finish off it inside yet. But, and there you go. I think that looks smashing. I've never done anything like this before. Um, it's a first for me. I'm really pleased with how that looks, keeping the natural look of the wood, the natural edges. It's not a tight fitting lid, it's perfect. You don't really need a tight fitting lid because you've only got sort of half a handle on here, as you can see. But I wanted to keep this natural shape. The markings on this wood are absolutely beautiful. I've got a bit of sanding and uh, finishing off to do, but that's basically the finished little pot. I love it. Really pleased with how that's come out. So there you go. A little natural edge pot from uh, birch. Or spalted birch. There's quite a bit of spalting on it. Love it. There you go, viewer. Uh, it's nice to be back. And um, I've got quite a few ideas in the pipeline. So uh, keep viewing. And thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much indeed for all the support I've had over the past few weeks. I've had literally hundreds and hundreds of messages. And uh, which is one of the, which is the main reason why I've started doing the videos again. So uh, I hope this one pleases you as much as it's pleased me. And I'll see you soon for the next one. Bye everybody.